Change is inevitable, except from vending machines. That's right, we're talking about changes in properties of matter. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Keminacha. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, I'm really excited about this new unit because it really gets at the heart of what this class is all about. Yeah, matter and energy really is the nuts and bolts of what chemistry is. So wait, matter and energy, isn't that like everything in the universe? Yes, that's because chemistry is everything in the universe. Let's get started. Changes and properties of matter. A lesson from the matter and energy unit. What is matter? Chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Matter has mass and occupies volume. Remember, mass is the amount of matter and volume is the amount of space that matter occupies. Matter is made of atoms and molecules. Molecules are combinations of atoms. Changes in matter are also accompanied by changes in energy. Matter and energy go hand in hand. You can't have a change in one without a change in the other. Phases of matter, solid, liquid, or gas, depend on the arrangement of those atoms or molecules. Take a look at the picture in the lower right. How does matter change? In a physical change, the arrangement or consistency of matter changes, but no new matter is created in the process. In a chemical change, the composition of matter changes. New matter is created with a new chemical formula. Now these are both very technical definitions, and I think there's more clarity when you see more examples of what these two changes are. What does a physical change look like? The appearance may change, but no new matter is produced. What to look for? Changes in size, like paper being shredded. Changes in consistency, like salt being ground into a powder. Phase changes, like ice melting. Dissolving and crystallization, which are opposites of each other, like sugar dissolving in water. Now be careful on these last two. Students often think these are chemical changes because the appearance has changed enough that it seems like new matter has been created. For example, with a phase change and ice melts, we still have water. It's just gone from solid to liquid. Same matter, different appearance. With dissolving, if we dissolve sugar in water, the sugar's still there in the water. It didn't turn into something else. So again, these are physical changes, not chemical. What does a chemical change look like? New matter with new properties must be created. This is what you're gonna look for. Color changes, for example, rusting. Heat or flames, example, gasoline burning. Flames are always a good indication of a chemical change, but you don't necessarily have to have them. Changes in temperature, either going up or down, can also be indicative of a chemical change. Gas formation, example, baking soda and vinegar bubbles. Now, in a gas formation, it has to be a brand new gas. This is not something that you would be heating up and changing from a liquid into a gas. The baking soda and vinegar are creating brand new carbon dioxide bubbles. And finally, solid formation. Example, when two liquids are mixed, it turns cloudy. So that cloudiness is actually a solid being formed and it's insoluble. So it's a brand new substance being formed. We call this process precipitation. What is the law of conservation of matter? It's also known as the conservation of mass. The total mass before a physical or chemical change must equal the total mass after. Even if matter changes forms, the matter is still present in the same amount. As we'll talk about in the future, the atoms that were there originally are there at the end of the change. They've simply been rearranged into a new formation. The law. Matter cannot be created, 
nor destroyed in any physical or chemical change. Sound familiar? How is matter described? We can describe matter using a physical property, which is a characteristic of matter that is described using the senses or measured in the lab. It's observed without the matter actually reacting. Examples include color, size, texture, density, melting point, solubility. Notice that physical properties can still be measurable quantities. We can also describe matter using a chemical property, which is a characteristic of matter that describes how matter reacts. It's observed by the matter actually reacting. An example would be to describe wood burning easily. Another example would be describing water as not being able to burn. Even though it's not reacting, we still consider that to be a chemical property. Now be careful on this last example. Water has the formula H2O. This is not a chemical property because we're only describing its chemical formula, not describing how water actually reacts. So one of the ways we can sum up this last slide is in a simple phrase just to test for it, right? So if you were to test for any of these properties. Okay, so let's say I had color. So how would you test for color? You would look at it. Now, by looking at something, does that change what that substance is? No. So that would be a physical property. Okay, um, how about flammability? So how would you test for flammability? you'd try to set it on fire. Now, if you tried to set something on fire, it would change the substance, right? So if you have a brand new substance like gasoline burning to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor, you got brand new substances. So flammability is a chemical property. All right, one more. What about density? All right, so in order to get density and test for it, you'd wanna get two quantities, right? Mass and volume. You'd simply get mass by putting it on a scale. That wouldn't change it and you get volume by water displacement or for regular objects, measure the size, right? So those two things would not change it, so therefore density must be a physical property. Got it. All right, so this last slide here is a table that we're gonna fill out tomorrow in class. We're gonna take a look at four samples of matter and we're going to fill out their physical and chemical properties. That's gonna do it for today's episode on changes and properties of matter. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by Equinophobia Therapy. Horses helping people overcome their fear of horses. Results may vary. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.